Good morning everyone and welcome back to Kelly's Kitchen on Big Oggy World and this is the next installment of your Christmas build-up. So one of the things that I think is a bit more light about Christmas is, is Christmas pudding. I think you either love it or you hate it and there's not really much in between. I can't say I hate it but I don't love it and it doesn't bother me if I don't have any at all throughout the Christmas season. So this pudding that we're going to do today is a bit of a lighter pudding. The plane's coming back in by the yeah. way. Every, every day we, time we do this. Yep. I told him he could have the day off but he will go playing in that thing. So anyway, um, this is a much lighter pudding. It's a golden sort of colour so it's not as heavy as Christmas pudding. Um, and it's citrusy so it's not got all the currants and all the business in it. It's got apricots and sultanas and clementines so it should be light but tasty it will still keep like a christmas pudding you can keep it for a year in the freezer if you want to freeze it or what was it john in a month about a month so if, if you, you kind of get ahead one you could get yeah. this done start with december it'll still be okay yeah so and you can flame it exactly the same as a christmas pudding the um alcohol in this is grand marnier so again we're going on that orangey vibe so not quite as heavy as brandy and all those sorts of things. So it's quite easy to put it together. The complicated bit is the steaming of it. Not that it's difficult to steam because it isn't, but there is a bit of faffing around with baking paper and plates and foil and all that business, but we'll see that at the end. Okay, so my first problem was I do not have a one and a half litre pudding basin and I'm not gonna go and buy one either. So I've got a litre and a half. So we're going to make two puddings and that's just the way we roll. Well, it's basically. kind of good for us because we can test smaller. Exactly. Yeah. And we, we've not got a big family, so we, why would we need a one and a half litre of pudding? Yeah, it's massive. I mean, that's big. That one, for, that's an M&S one, which we actually got when we won a Christmas pudding. I won at the golf, the golf club. Yeah. Um, so it's a sizable, decent Christmas pudding size. That's anyway. a litre in that one. Yeah. So to start off with, dead easy, same as most things, you're going to cream together your butter and your sugar, but also in with this, you're going to add four tablespoons of golden syrup. So John will put all of the ingredients at the in the description below, so you don't need to worry about any of that now. Let's just get going. This obviously. is pretty much a sponge pudding. Just, just a sponge pudding, not a massively heavy fruit pudding. No. Obviously, if you can get your butter to be soft at room temperature or whatever, that's much better. The one thing that you do need to do in advance of this is to soak your fruit for an hour in 75 mils of Grand Marnier. Yeah, but so it's only like apricots and the sultanas. Yeah, apricots and sultanas. So in goes the butter, in goes the light brown sugar. Not again, much. Yeah, it's not that heavy again because we've only had to soak this up for an hour. With a big bit of pudding, you'd be soaking them overnight. Exactly. So I'm going to cream this first and then I'm going to add my syrup a bit at a time. So, good noise. So, whilst that's whizzing, I'm going to put in four tablespoons of golden syrup. Who thought of this? Isn't that the best invention? Who yeah. remembers the old tins of golden syrup where it's got absolutely everywhere? All right, I'm just going to push all this down one last time. It's going nice and light and fluffy anyway, but... Okay, so now I'm going to gradually add two medium eggs whilst it's whipping. Don't worry if it looks like it's curdling, let's keep eating and it'll come back. And then into that you're going to add the zest of three clementines. Clementines are crisper. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's my sugar and eggs and butter all mixed in with the orange zest. The next thing you do is you fold in your flour I'm going to do it a bit at a time. 
75 grams of brioche, which you've made into breadcrumbs. I was that up in the food processor. Two teaspoons of ground mixed spice. The rest of the flour. Right, so now you've got all your dry goods in, it's actually quite thick. So into that, you are going to add the juice of three clementines. So you've used the zest and the juice. Now, we've actually left the juicy bits in. Yeah, we had a, a normal hand squeezer. Yeah, so, so that might be a bit controversial, but yeah. I like my juice with pulpy bits in. So in goes the juice which is obviously going to loosen everything right up again. And last but not least is your fruit that you've soaked in the Grand Marnier. So apricots and sultanas. Yeah. And there won't be a lot of liquid because most of it's been taken by the fruit. So. Oh, it smells boozy though. I like Grand Marnier. It's one of those ones that sort of lost popularity a bit over the years. I can't admit, we had trouble finding it for quite some time and literally it's just arrived in Sainsbury's again. It's probably a Christmas thing. It's a Christmas idea. People like after dinner drinks. Right. So that's the mixture all mixed in. And now I'm going to divide it between my two pudding basins. Now to prepare the pudding basins, we have generously buttered them and just cut a little circle of baking parchment to go in the bottom, just so it makes turning out a bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and divide this up and then we'll talk about the faffy bit. The faffy bit. Yeah, explain the pudding though. <laughs> when I came to put it into the basin, I sort of mostly filled this basin um, and then I put it in the little basin, but there wasn't enough in the little basin to even make it workable. So I basically put it in here and it Turns out we got one big pudding. So this is a one pound pudding basin, supposedly. One litre. Sorry, one litre pudding basin. Pudding basin. Now, the we'll problem may be that when I steam it, it could all completely explode. But that'll be part of the fun and that's what we put on the video. But we will see. So now the faffy bit, and this is the bit where I don't like it because I just you don't, don't like do old faffy. fashioned no. cooking, do you? So basically, what you need to do is get a large piece of baking parchment. Like so. You are then going to butter this piece of paper, obviously butter side up. Bear with. Any fun look? No. <laughs> Tell you, what, you hold that. I'll hold that. So it becomes a two person job. Well, it does if you're gammy handed like me. I would guess as long as it's in the middle because the sides aren't actually going to be. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Well, I reckon that's probably okay. I think mean, that's fine. Okay. Right. So that's a well buttered piece of brown paper. Oh. Next step, get rid of your butter. Yep, done that bit. You then need to get an equal sized piece of kitchen foil. That one size, I think. You should have seen the way they described this on the magazine. That's very good. Go on then. Now, my baking, my foil rather, is non stick on one side. I don't presume it really matters, but Not anyway. Really. What you then do is you put the foil underneath the baking paper, like so. Yeah? Yeah, like so, yeah. Although the magazine said a completely different way, yeah. that's exactly what you're doing. And then you need to fold a pleat in the two pieces. Yeah. So. That's it. This just allows for expansion, really. That's it. About an inch or so, it's fine. Like that. Yep. Perfect. And then 
you turn this whole thing upside down so the butter side is down. Yep, the butter's got to be over the plate, over the pudding. Over the pudding. Yep, like that. Like that. Yep, and then twist it all over. So try and, but make sure you keep your pleat like that. And then we quite the string. But what I'm going to have to do, because my foil isn't very we'll white, another layer of foil is I'm going to have to do another layer of foil going this way with another pleat so that that still expands. Yeah. Because we're going to steam this pudding, are we not? We're going to steam this pudding for three hours. Yeah, it's a traditional old fashioned way of doing it. It's a normal steam pudding. So I know people are going to say it's going to cost a lot of money to do, but it is Christmas. Lovely. Right. We are going to do it traditionally in a saucepan on the stove. We have got a trivet, so we don't need to bother. But if you do not have a trivet and you want to do it traditionally on the stove in a saucepan, then get another piece of foil, a long piece, and fold it and fold it until you've got a thin strip. Like a belt, really. Yeah, like a belt. And put that underneath your pudding into the saucepan but put the pudding on something like a jam lid. Jam jar lid, yeah. Something. Yeah, a jam jar lid or yeah, something like that. Lid. You don't want it to be touching the bottom of no. the pan. So as long as it's off the bottom of the pan, it's fine. So if you don't have a trivet, don't worry about it. The other thing is, I know like John said, you're going to say, oh, it's quite expensive to do that. It's going to be on the cooker for three hours, blah, blah, blah. If you've got a, a steamer, what are you, doing there? you could probably do it in an ordinary steamer. And that will probably be cheaper because you are only going to be um, managing a small amount of water. But if you are going to do it in a steamer, guys, please check because they do run out of water quite quickly. Whereas at least if it's in a pan, you can keep your eye on it a bit. So I'm going to trim this a little bit because I just don't want all this sat in water. Okay, so this is going to go on my trivet. I think I paid probably about three quid for this thing and it's been the handiest thing ever. And then I'm going to put it into my saucepan, fill the saucepan halfway up the side of the pudding basin with boiling water from the kettle, uh, put the lid on and let it steam away for three hours. Obviously keep your eye on the saucepan as well to make sure that you don't boil it dry. And then we'll be back later. Right then, darling, day, or probably four, actually. Probably. Uh, yeah, we finished the golden pudding. Yes, we did. And uh, it was beautifully steamed, no problem. We stuck it in the fridge. Yeah, you had to wait for it to go completely cold and then wrap it if you wanted to keep it, yeah. which is what we intend to do. So we haven't flamed it or anything, but we thought we would try and turn it out yeah. just to show you what it looked like. Um, because it's been in the fridge for a few days, it was pretty much stuck in the pudding basin. It did, yeah. So, um, so we stuck it in hot water. We stuck it in hot water. We did. Um, and it's I come out okay. loosened it with a knife. And yeah, it's come out okay. It'd just be slightly rougher on the edges than it would be if you were steaming it and then bringing it straight out. And Absolutely. Putting it on your table. But I can tell you right now... Because there's been bits falling off, I've tasted it and it's absolutely lush. Yeah, it's quite really orangey. We knew that because that's got clementine. Yeah, it's got it. clementine zest and juice in. And obviously, fruit wise, we've got apricots and sultanas. So it's completely different. It's a lot lighter than a normal Christmas pudding. It. So, yeah, so the edges are slightly rough. Hey, it's a steam pudding. It's not going to look the prettiest thing. But that is quite, well, I'd like to say clutey dumpling, but it's a bit that kind of thing. It's lovely. It is lovely. It looks really good, actually. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm not going to flame it or anything for you because I'm going to put it back in the basin. Yeah, we're going to keep it for our own Christmas. It, and it's for Christmas because it will last as, as long as it's in a cool, dark place. So um, that's what we're going to do. But we really wanted to show you what it looked like. So there is your golden pudding. So again, honestly, it's really good. Really good. Absolutely. It's still a big piece of apricot in yeah. it and the fruit in it absolutely worth making if you're not a fan of the heavy sort of Christmas pudding. It looks a lot lighter. So I said yeah. I had a tiny little bit on the edge where we had to cut it around with a knife to get it out. Yeah. Um, and it tastes lovely. Yeah. And it is, does seem very light to me. Absolutely. So I think it would be perfect. I think this would be perfect with cream more yeah. so than custard. I think well, you could have custard if both. you want to, yeah. but you know, because it's lighter, you could get it's it with It's a proper cream. sponge pudding. Absolutely. It really is. So hope you really like it. 
Hope you give it a go. Hope you've subscribed and you've hit your notification bells and you're going to come along and join us for the rest of our journey between now and Christmas. So have a good time. Happy Christmas if we're not quite sure where this one's going out. So happy Christmas to you all and we'll see you all again soon. Bye for now. Thank you.